Now that I've given you my overview of the system and why I like it, we're going to talk first about two really crucial aspects of the mechanics of To the Strongest, which are command structure and activations. So anytime you start a battle, you're first going to break up your army into three separate commands, and a general will preside over each one of these commands. There are different kinds of generals. We're just going to touch on the basic ones, an attached and a detached general. So I'll have two attached generals, which are part of units. They move with the units. They fight with the units. And I'll have one detached general that can move around the battlefield. And the main function of these generals is they can replay failed activations within their command. Also, units have to stay that aren't light units within two grid boxes of their general or they're considered out of command and it makes them harder to activate. So here over here on my left, I, I, on, on the Roman side, we're just going to have some Romans versus Germans, I have, I have my attached general, he's part of that unit right there. So wherever he goes, wherever that unit goes, the general will follow. When he gets in combat, if that unit is hit, that general will have to save too, so he's very much down with his troops, fighting with them. And he can only influence troops within his box, so really only the unit he's attached to, as well as that unit sharing the box with him. All right, And so his command are these four units over there. We move to the middle, and I have uh, my, my detached general, so he can kind of move around and influence other units within his command. And he is going to be in charge of these four units in the middle. Now this guy, uh, he can move two spaces every turn. He can make a command move, move two spaces to help any unit that fails to activate in his command to reactivate. So that's how he's different from the detached or attached generals. And over there on our right, we have our attached general, and he is he's only going to be in charge of three units over there on the far right. So there we go, there is how I broke down my command for this small Roman army. I did a, I broke down the German army on the other side in a very similar ma manner. The Germans will have two attached generals and one detached general, and each will control around four units, so I did the same. Now, let's talk about activations. So activations are the basis for pretty much all the mechanics you'll deal with whether it be charging, shooting, rallying, moving, they all are based upon whether or not a unit can activate. And activate basically means a commander gives an order to a unit. They'll either receive the order and complete the action, or they can fail to activate, and basically the entire command is in disarray and their turn ends. And so the basics of it are, you're going to be drawing cards instead of rolling dice. An ace equals one, all the numbered cards equal the value of the number on their, car on their card. And all face value cards equal a 10 card value. So 10 is the maximum value you can draw in this rule set. All right. And so what you'll do to begin each turn is you'll choose one of your three commands to activate first. And then you will start, you'll choose one unit within that command that you want to activate first. It can be any unit that you choose. And once you choose that unit, you draw a card. As long as you are able to draw a two or higher, so anything other than an ace, you can give that unit an order, whether it be to move, shoot, rally, whatever. So I'm just going to kind of show you how the activations work. I'm just going to move these units. We'll talk about movement in my next video, but I just want you to want you to see how commands are activated when they fail and what happens. And, uh, and just how you move through your turn activating your troops. So I'm going to start off activating my left flank. And I'm going to choose one of these units to activate first. Again, it can be any unit. All right. Um, so I'm going to choose this unit over here on the right. Now to activate them, I need to draw a two or higher. I draw three, and so they activate. Now, what, one thing that is smart to do and to the strongest, is you activate one unit. Don't try and activate them again right away. To activate that unit again, I'd have to draw 
a card with a one value higher than my previous activation. So if I want to activate that unit again, to do an easy activation, I'd have to draw a four. Now there's a risk there that I would draw a lower card value, and if that happens, my entire command's turn is over. So I would not be able to go and move or shoot or rally any of those other three units within that command. So what's a smart thing to do is after you activate one unit is to go to a different unit in your command and attempt to activate them before you come back and try any second activation. And there are really two different kinds of activations you can do. There are easy activations. Those are just simple orders, usually meaning charging straight ahead, moving straight ahead, things of that nature. There are also things called difficult activations. Like here I just put a hill in front of this unit. If you are moving in or from rough terrain, changing the facing of your troops, those are considered a difficult activation, and you have to draw a one higher card value than you usually would to activate a unit for the second time. So I would have to draw a five for that unit to move them onto that rough terrain, that hill. So you can see how the activation process is really a risk versus reward kind of system. You can activate one unit several times, but there's always a chance that you will draw an ace or a card value less than your previous activation. And when that happens, your unit will fail to activate and the entire command's turn is over until the next round. So you always have to balance whether or not you want to push one troop farther with another activation at the risk of your entire command's turn being over. So now I'm going to go and I'm going to activate another unit in my command. I like to activate each unit once before I activate a unit for the second time. So I'm going to activate these cavalry over here on the left flank. I need a two or better to activate, but I draw an ace. So that means my command's turn is over. They failed to activate. Orders got lost in the mail. And so my entire left flank cannot do any more orders, any more actions until the next round. So you can see how an ace can really just halt an advance or an attack in his tracks. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to activate my central command here. So I'm going to activate these two units there that occupy the same box as my general. So it's usually a good idea to activate your general's unit first since if you do draw an ace, you can use your general's ability to replay an activation to hopefully draw a higher card value and be able to activate. It's kind of your get out of jail free card. So I'm going to move these two units and if you have two units that are sharing the same box, you can choose to activate them both at the same time. So I need to draw a two or higher. I drew a three so I am able to perform an action with those troops, whether it be move, whether it be shoot, rally, whatever. Alright, so I'm going to move both of them just up right there. And I, I guess I'll go ahead and move my general up as well. So the next unit I'm going to activate is this unit over here on the left. I activate them with a 6. I needed a 2 or better. I got that with a 6. So I activate them. And then I'm going to go over to the final unit in my command. Again, I like to activate every unit at least once before activating another unit again. And I activate them with a 10. Now, drawing a 10 on your first activation is actually pretty rough. That means in order for me to activate that unit again, I would have to draw another 10 or another face card, which is, of course, very hard to do. So usually when you draw a 10 on your first activation, that unit's pretty much stuck there until the next round. So not really what I wanted from them. All right, so now that I've ad activated everybody once, now I can go back to another unit and activate them for a second time. I want to activate these guys here in the middle because they only activated on a three. So in order to activate these guys again, I'll have to draw a four or better. I draw a 10, and so I'm able to move them once again. So it's always a good idea to go to the unit that had the lowest activation to try and activate them for a second time. Your chances of success are much higher if you do that. So they drew a 10. I don't want to try and activate them for a third time yet. The chances of me pulling that off are slim, so I'm going over to my unit over here that had a 6. I need a 7 or higher to activate. I drew a 5, 
And while normally that would mean my turn would be over, I have this detached general who once per turn, he can make a command move to go and replay a failed activation. I had been accompanying a previous unit, so I hadn't used my command move yet. So in order to reactivate, I'll have to again pick a higher card than my previous activation, which was a six. I draw a four, do not activate. And so now that entire command's turn is over. I can't move or rally or shoot or charge with any of those units. So now that was more of a typical activation. Usually you don't draw an ace on your second card. That's pretty unlucky. So you got to see kind of my process on how I move and also why generals become such a big deal. I failed to activate with that one unit. I was given a second chance uh, to try and, and get them to move. I failed, but you can, you can see how that happened. So over here on my right, we'll activate my final command. After I activate these guys, my entire turn will be over. So I'm going to activate this box, this this unit which with the attached general and the, the unit sharing the box. All right, so I activated that with a 4. Now I'm going to go and move over to this unit. I'm going to activate them with a 10. They're cavalry, so they get to move a little farther than infantry. We'll talk about that in the next video. And then I'm going to go back to this unit, and I am going to attempt to activate them again. I want them to move onto rough terrain, so that is considered a difficult activation. So normally I'd activate these guys on a 5 for their second activation. But since I'm moving into rough terrain, I must add 1 to that number. So to get that unit on top of that hill, I will have to draw a 6, at least a 6. Look at that, I draw a 7, and so they are able to make it on top of the hill. So it was a little bit more of a risky maneuver. I had to draw a slightly higher card value in order to move them, but I was able to do it. So now I will activate my cavalry one more time. I'll have to get a 10 or better, so it will be a small chance of that. But look at that, I do. I draw a king, so I'm able to move them one more time. And so I'll go and I'll try and activate them one last time. Sometimes your units will be able to activate three or four times, and you can move them almost across the board. And other times you'll fail to activate on your first attempt. So let's see what I draw. No, I draw a nine, so I will not be able to activate. So my entire turn is now completed with the final activation of my last command. So in my next video, we'll go over movement in depth, and you'll see really how to activate units in order to move them around the battle.